also it makes me happy how many of you are giving math a chance um just because I dressed up in cosplay you know um that's that's awesome even if you hate a subject and you're giving it a chance that's that's what matters right and I hope that if you get anything from this it's that you're capable of math and that it doesn't have to be some scary thing and that honestly at any age in your life you can learn mathematics and you can be successful at it. Maybe maybe it's it's not in the time that teachers wanted you to. Maybe it's not at the pace of everyone else, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. Okay? So, um well, luckily math is universal, honey. If you're in the UK, like honestly, like math is the universal language. It's the same wherever you go, and that's really neat. That I also really like about it. <laughs> You'd be king of the world. <laughs> oh, my word. All right, so today what I wanted to talk about um, is I've noticed, like, at, at really any, any level that a lot of people still kind of struggle with the cons. Oh, thank you for the heart. <laughs> um... Thank you, Jims the Frog. I've noticed that people struggle with um, slope at really any any range of learning, right? Which is a crazy thing to me. It's really weird to me that there's so much struggle around um, w what slope is, like in a graph or in an equation or in a chart, because we all inherently understand what slope is. And we don't build off of that, right? You already know what a slope of a line is. You already understand what that situation is. But often, we just, like, we get lost in the trees and we lose the forest through the trees, right? So today, we're going to be talking a little bit about slope. And my main goal for you in this lesson is that I want you... This guy's starting to dry out. I want you to just walk away feeling comfortable that you know what that means, right? Maybe you don't know how to calculate it by the end or anything like that. But if you walk away from here having a better understanding of just what that means when someone says the slope of a line or you look at a graph and someone's talking about slope, that's going to be awesome for me, okay? Get that concept first. All right, so slope, how do I want to introduce this? I'm just going to draw a graph. I'm just going to draw a random graph, and we're going to talk through it for a moment, okay? Boop, 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 doop, boop, boop, doop, 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 doop. All right, so this is my y-axis. Tell me why. This is my x-axis. No! Look where my brain is. That's my X. This is my Y. Life is good. <laughs> Tell me that you're having a hard time waking up this morning without telling me you're having a hard time waking up this morning. All right. So, um, give me some context. Give me some context. Um, let's go with, I'm going to say that this is... This is going to be months. So this is, no, no, I take that back. Okay, this is going to be days of the week. So this is going to be Monday. This guy's going to be Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. Right. Um, and this side is going to be, <laughs> what is this one going to be? Um, let's have this guy be, um, how many people are tuning into present Mike's radio show? Great. This is listeners, number of listeners listeners i can't spell listeners for put 
your hands up radio. I'm going to draw a little, little headset. It's going to be bad. That is not, no, we're going to do a music note instead. This is how many people are tuning into my radio show. All right. Throughout the week. Great. That's the context of our graph. How many people are tuning into my radio show? And then what day of the week it is. And I know we don't have every day of the week on, but I ran out of room. So that's life, isn't it? Mm. New marker. All right, let's say mm, we're going to measure this in hundreds. Because I have so many wonderful listeners. 400, 500. Sorry, my handwriting's a little sloppy. 600. 700. I always joke that I have bad handwriting. That's why I had to become a math teacher. All right. So let's say that on Monday, 200 people are listening to my radio show. Tuesday, it's going to be 400. Wednesday, it was only 300. Um, Thursday, it's going to be... 500 and then Friday we're up here at 700 listeners all right so when I'm talking about the slope of a graph what I'm really talking about is how how much is it going up or down by we're literally just just trying to describe with a number how steep of an incline or a decline we got going on. That number is just trying to express to you how much, in this case, my listeners went up. It's just describing that to you in a number. So the, we'll talk about like what that number means so that when you look at it, you have a general idea of what's going on. That's all that number is for, is just to give you this general idea of what's going on. Um, and so that you can visualize like, oh, wow, a lot of new listeners tuned in. Or, oh, wow, there wasn't very many new listeners. Or, I had a drop in listeners. That really sucks. What did we do wrong that day? Um, and we can kind of put some more context to this, right? Like, what time does my radio show usually air? Does anyone know? In the show, how often, when does President Mike's radio show air? It's like really late at night, right? Usually it's on Fridays on the thing, but like when he does it, it's like late at night, right? It's like 12 to 1. It's really late. Um, or it's like, it's just late at night that he's listening to it. So we can even put more context on this on like, well, Monday, there weren't as many listeners because people are probably coming back from work, right? Um, they're coming back to work. It's coming off the weekend. They're probably not staying up late that night to listen. Tuesday, maybe more people are. Wednesday, um, it's the lull in the week. People are probably getting tired and going to bed again. So it went down some. And then Thursday and Friday, people are staying up having a good time, going out, they want their jams, they want to go party. So that content, like, it shot up. Now, if I'm describing slope with numbers, the general idea of, of what is going to be an increase in slope and what's going to be a decrease in slope is if your slope, if the number that gets used to describe your slope um, the bigger that number is, basically, the bigger that number is, and it's positive, um, like, the larger the increase. So, like, one would not be a very big slope. That would not be a very large increase. From... Monday to Tuesday, I increased by 200 listeners. That would end up being a slope of 200. 
because it went up 200 and just over one. In one day, I went up 200. Sometimes you'll see your teacher write it and often it might get written as a fraction. Don't panic on me for writing this as a fraction. All that this is saying is that I got 200 new listeners in one day. All right, that's how much it went up. Now, the larger number, the um, saying like from, let's say if we made a, a separate graph where it was just comparing Monday, or do I want to do that yet? Sorry, I'm looking at my numbers and I wanted it to be a bigger number and I'm realizing I did it at a steady rate of 200 for a lot of these, which is upsetting for me. We're going to change something really quick just for the sake of this example. This number was actually 800. Friday had 800 listeners. So it's up just a little bit higher at 800 listeners. So that means on Friday, from Thursday to Friday, I was at 500 and it went up to 800 listeners. So that was 300 listeners, an increase of 300 listeners in one day. So that would be a bigger slope. The bigger the number, my only point in this is my the bigger the number, the larger the increase in the slope. And let's be honest, didn't you already kind of know that? The line went up steeper. The number was bigger. So it was a larger increase in slope. That's really what it's trying to say, is the bigger the number, the larger the thing. Awesome. Someone just pointed out Tuesdays to Wednesdays, which I was just about to get to. So this would be something we call a positive slope if the number is getting bigger, right? If the number is positive, it's a positive slope. It's increasing. Now here we had this section from Tuesday to Wednesday where I lost listeners, right? Not as many listeners were tuning in. Not as many listeners were tuning in. So in this case, the slope of my line went down, right? There was a decrease. It's like I subtracted listeners. Since I'm subtracting, we're gonna call that a negative slope. So if you ever see a number that's describing slope as negative, that is meaning that it went down. That's meaning that it's just not, a, it. The number like on your graph, it wasn't going dirt, 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 dirt. It meant, oh my gosh, I subtracted that many. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I lost. So this, in this case, I went down from 400 to 300 listeners. So I subtracted 100 listeners, right? There's a difference of 100 between 400 and 300. I lost 100 listeners in one day. In one day. So that would be my slope. That would be the slope of that section. So what I want you to take away from this guy is that if my slope is increasing, if you see a positive number, then that means that line's going dirk, 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 up. And then if you have a bigger the number, it means the steeper it is, right? That's how steep your line is. If it's not a very big number, it's gonna be like, mm, not very steep. But if it is a very steep line, right? That's gonna be a much bigger number. So the larger the number, 
the steeper your line is. If your number is going down though, right, then it's going to be negative. You'll see a negative slope. Similarly, similarly with this negative slope though, this is, this is a little weird, but it's going to make sense, I promise, okay? We're going to add an extra day to this. We're going to say, we're going to add a few extra days. I'm going to try and like get those guys on. Oh, actually, we're going to put it over here. It's going to be weird, but we're putting it over here. We're going to say from Sunday to Monday. Let's say that Sunday I was at 500 listeners, and then Monday we went down, right? So here I was at 500 listeners, right? Because it's still the weekend. We're listening. It's good. But then Monday, it's the work week. We're not listening as much at night. So it went way, 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 way down. So then it went down to that 200 listeners. That's a way bigger drop from here to here, right? Than here to here. My line is like going down way more. That line is way steeper going down because I lost more listeners that day. So how many listeners did I lose from 500 to 200? Coffee break. Awesome. I lost 300 listeners, right? So that's a negative 300 listeners running our room. Sorry about that. In one day. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And so now tell me. That negative 300 was way worse, right? That minus 300 is like way more listeners that I lost. So that's going to be a way steeper slope downwards. If I'm losing not that many listeners, it's going to look like this, right? It's going to be like a little down. But if I'm losing a lot of listeners, it's going to be like, whoosha! I like crack my arm when I did that. That was fun. Oh, thank you for the heart love. Um, so it's a little weird, but always bring yourself back to the context of what's happening. Okay. That's what we're really like aiming for in this lesson today is just the context of slope. What is slope saying? Um, because if you can remember that, you can problem solve through a lot of different rules with slope. Whoop. So this is where a lot of people get tripped up, okay? And I'm going to kind of restate it because this is kind of like what you get taught is you might get taught like, oh, well, if it's a positive slope, the bigger the number, the higher the s slope. Um, but here, if it's a negative number, it's kind of the same. It's like the larger the slope. Um, but just keep in mind what's happening with that. The negative slope means it's taking away. It's getting smaller. You went smaller. Think of it like subtracting something away. You're losing. Positive slope, think of it like you are gaining. Things are going up. Bigger the number, the more gain or more loss. Okay? My change just got caught to my carpet. That was fun. Yes, the higher the number, the steeper the line. Beautiful. The higher the number, the steeper the line. Mm. Punk problems, for sure. Getting caught on things. <laughs> Oh, you're sweet. All right. Oh, you're welcome, honey. I'm glad that this is helpful. Oh, I'm glad this is fun. That makes my heart so happy. Well, um, I don't know about you, but my eraser is right here. Badach. 
I only have bad jokes. I'm sorry. All right. What time are we at? I love that that TikTok added the little time feature up in the corner so I can see. That wasn't always there, and I was just kind of, like, lost in time, um, which is fun. All right, so now let's take a moment, and we're actually going to talk about how you can calculate slope. Usually you talk about how to calculate slope, and then we get into the context, but I like to start with the context first. All right, and I kind of have been talking about how to calculate it a little, but we're going to talk a little bit more about it, okay? Mm. Coffee makes me happy. Also, there's a little kitty cat on my cup. Look at him. Look at him go. Nyaw. So good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to calculate slope. So there's situations where just reading the slope is good enough, right? That'll get you through a lot of situations in life. Um, oh, President Mike does not have bad jokes. <laughs> So there's a lot of times in life where, like, if you were trying to read a document, right, if you were trying to, like, look at the newspaper and figure out what's happening with graphs and stuff, um, or if you were, like, we've all been looking at a lot of graphs lately with COVID, right? So if you're trying to read what's happening with that situation and get a better grasp of what's happening, um, this will get you pretty far of being under just able to understand that basics of the negative means we're going down. And the more negative it is, the bigger the number it is, the more we've gone down, the steeper the slope, right? Um, the positive means we're going up. And the bigger the number, the more cases or something, you know? So that'll get you through an absolute lot. But let's say you're in a situation where you need to calculate it. And... um. I'm going to give you the answer that I give my students when they say, when am I going to need this? There are a lot of jobs and a lot of places where you will need this. There are also a lot of jobs and a lot of places where you will never knew, need this, right? But I do not have a crystal ball and I do not have your free, know your future and neither do you. So what I always like to do is think of it as I'd rather you have this tool and not need it then need this tool and not have it, right? It's always better to fill in our toolbox as much as possible. Um, so that you can do it. All right, sorry, I got distracted by the chat. Oh, all right, so I'm gonna erase this and we're gonna talk about some ways to calculate slope, okay? Also, the very general answer is you need it to pass your math classes, at the very least. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Squeaker mix squeaking. I need to wash this. This will probably be quicker. I like teaching from the floor. This is more satisfying for me. I'm not going to lie. I'm a floor person. All right, let's get into a little bit more formally noty McNote notes. I don't know why I said it like that, but that was life. <laughs> Neurodivergent floor is good. <laughs> yes, it is. I have times in the classroom where I'm like, I, you guys, I just want to lay on the floor. And my students are like, do it. Follow your dream. And I lay on the floor and I'm like, thank you for supporting me. We're all here to support each other's dreams. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the statistics. It'll be okay. I believe in you, honey. Yeah, another floor person. Love it. <laughs> All right. So let's get into a little bit more formally notes. I kind of already said that. Cool, great. I repeat myself. Um, so we're going to talk about calculating slope.
In math, we both calculate and we look to understand. We first did the looking to understand. Now let's talk about how we might calculate it. All right, so the way you calculate slope, there's several ways people will talk about it. So you may have heard one of these ways. Um, the very common one we say to people that some teachers don't like, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure why, is rise over run. Yep, got it in the chat, rise over run. Often, slope gets said as a fraction. You will also see it as a decimal. You will also see it as a whole number, okay? The reason why we calculate it using a fraction is that slope is a rate, okay? And we kind of already said that, right? And you kind of already knew that. Um, because, like, when we talked about it, we talked about it as the number of listeners I had for each day. That's a rate, right? How many listeners per day? That is a rate. That's all a rate is, is saying like this for every this. That's what slope is because we're really, we're comparing those two axes. We're comparing two things in slope. What's happening usually over time. So we calculate it by something called our rise over our run. Um, another way of thinking about that is how much am I going up or down, right? How much is it vertically changing? My arrows are awesome. No, they're not, but we live with it. Over how much am I going over? Right? Rise over run. Another way that we say this, that teachers, a lot of professors and teachers much prefer and I, I get a little bit why they prefer it, because it's using more sophisticated math lingo, right? Um, and I want you to see it because it will get used, is we call it the change. Weirdly enough, we say change with a triangle in math. Like, I could not tell you why. I could be really honest with you on that one. Could not tell you why. But that's what we use. We use the triangle as a symbol to say the change. This has changed. All right. We also will use triangles to say triangle. But if you see it like this in a fraction, it means change. The change in Y over the change in X. Right. The change in Y over the change in X. How much has it changed? And I think, I think the reason why a lot of math teachers prefer that is that when I say rise over run, people usually get stuck on the how much I go up and how much I go over this way. But really, it could be going either which way. It's just saying how much has this number changed versus how much this number has changed. And as we saw in our last graph, sometimes it goes down, right? Sometimes your slope doesn't go up. Sometimes it goes down and it's negative. And that's okay. So I do, I do kind of like the, the change in Y over the change in X. But I will also say with students, rise over run or draw out the picture. Because I'm a very huge advocate of whatever works for your brain is what you should do. And your brain doesn't have to work the same way as someone else's that's okay. That doesn't make your brain better or worse. That's just your brain, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to draw out a little, little graphy graph. That's not going to have much context just to kind of explain what I mean by the change in Y over the change in X, right? And to help us start calculating it. Do, do, do. Here's my little graphy graph. Ah, oh, yeah, singing makes everything better. All right, this is my x-axis, and this is my y-axis. All right, we're just going to add some numbers in here for the sake of it. And this guy's zero.
We're only going up to four because that's apparently the amount of room I had. And literally no other reason. Literally no other reason. Math in general isn't going to change from continent to continent or country to country. And that's the really beautiful thing about math is that math is math is math wherever you go. And I can believe that that it gets taught in different methods, maybe, or maybe we talk about it a little differently from place to place. But the really beautiful thing about mathematics is if I gave you a mathematical proof over here in America and I sent it to Australia, if I sent it the same one to Russia, if I sent the same one um, to South Africa, to Kenya, to um, Spain, it would any mathematician there would be able to read it. All of them would, and I wouldn't have to change a thing. And that's freaking beautiful. That, isn't that so cool? Like, just take a moment to let that sink in. If I wrote you out some mathematical equations proving that something worked, right? Showing you maybe the new math I created and I sent it out to any country on earth. I sent it to any mathematician. They could read it. We don't speak the same language, but math is going to be the same. That's cool. That's so cool. And yeah, math is a language. So I think we beat ourselves up on like that. It's like, oh, we can't read it and stuff. And I don't know what's happening. You are learning a totally new language. It's a new language. That's crazy. So be kind to yourself, right? Like we don't see people beating up themselves up the same way they beat themselves up about math for like not being able to learn Spanish in the same amount of time as somebody else. It's okay. It is okay. All right. Moving on. How we calculate this? All right. So I'm just going to throw some stuff up and I'm going to keep erasing from this. We're just going to keep finding different measurements. Okay. And so like I'll measure it and then I will probably erase and we'll measure a new one. Okay. Um, let's say I'm here at one, one. And I don't know, we'll go, for this first guy, we'll go up to 2, 4. Right? Burp, 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 burp. Well, right off the bat, you all know this is a positive slope, right? Because it's going up. It's positive. Yeah, yeah. So now, let's measure that change in Y over the change in X. My rise over my run. How much did I go up? from one to four. What was my increase? From one to four, how much did I go up? Beautiful, beautiful, my dears. You guys are so smart and wonderful. Awesome, I went up three. The change from one to four was three. Awesome. All right, so now, how much did I change from one to two? How much did I go over from one to two? Yeah, yeah, I went over one. My slope is three over one. That is the measurement of that freaking line is three over one or if I want to reduce my fractions, right? I could just say that's three, right? Because three over one is the same as just three. That's it. That's the change. Let's do another one.
I'll give people a moment because I know some of you like write these down. It's so easy. You're right. It's so easy. Math is one of those things where it's like everything is like really hard until suddenly it's very easy. It's like the most frustrating thing on this planet until suddenly it's the easiest thing on this planet. And then you go and you learn a new thing. That's the mathematical process of learning. <laughs> yeah, as soon as it clicks, as soon as you have that, oh, it's like, well, that was easy. So that's why, like, often in class, I always joke that, like, the main thing I do is I, like, am a math therapist where I'm just like, hold my hand, hold my hand. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I'm here for you. We're here together and we're going to get through this and it's not as bad as it seems. I promise. Just keep, ah, oh, I love that. Just keep learning, just keep learning, just keep learning, learning, learning. What do we do? We learn, learn, learn. Okay, I'm good. I'm not good, but like you already knew that, so eh. All right, let's do another. Where'd my marker go? Here we are. Um, We're going to start at... 3-1, and we're going to go to 3-1. No, we'll do that. We'll do 3. We'll do this. So we started at 1-3, and we went to 3-1. Ho, ho, ho. Burp. Let's see how much did... So now, right off the bat, right off the bat, right... We know that this guy's negative, right? It's going down, down, down. <laughs> Sorry, like I just had like the, you know, like the remix of like the, like the, where they did like the Bee Gees or like the Beach Boys do like Shorty Got Low. That's been stuck in my brain on repeat for like the last couple days. So it was like, got low, 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 low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I amuse myself. Yeah. Killing it. All right, so it's going down, right? This is a negative slope. It's negative. Is is going down. <laughs> oh, we've had to clown cuz it's about to go down. Um so right off the bat, I know this guy's a negative slope. I'm gonna slap a negative on there. Done. Easy. Not going to worry about that guy anymore. It's going down. It's clearly negative. Moving on with my life. Um, how much did this change? What was the change and why? All right. From three to one here. Burp, 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 burp. Right? How much did that change? How much did we go down? From three to one. I am seeing some beautiful answers. I'm also seeing some really beautiful wrong answers. And you're like, how can a wrong answer be beautiful? They can be beautiful because we learn a lot from them. And also because they often have a lot of logic behind them. You didn't get it from nowhere. So beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. A lot of people are saying this guy is negative two. It went down two. And you're totally right. From three to one, I went down two. Right? Or we could think of this as like three minus one. Two. That's the change in that number. I saw some threes in there. And what that was a really good wrong answer. And I get where you're coming from. Because we've got three and one. And maybe you were thinking of it like three times one. Um... And so I can see where you got that three from, but it is going to be two. I changed two. I went down once, I went down twice, now I'm at that. I can erase that so it's not too confusing. But you see what I mean? I went down one, two, bam. All right, now my question, how much did I go over? If I started at one and I'm moving over to three, how much did I go over? Oh my gosh, I'm loving the rainbow color happening right now. That's fun. Yeah. 
Nice job, my dears. It is two. Good job. And again, I saw the three, and that's okay. I get why you got that, right? But from one to three, we are changing once, twice. So I end up with two over two, negative two over two. Now, this is not incorrect, but it is not my slope's final form. Who can tell me what I need to do? What must happen to this negative two over two? Beautiful, 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 my dear. I see some people already reduced it and people are coming in saying you simplify, simplify your life. All right, we can reduce this because what is two over two the same as? Two over, two over two is one whole, right? You simplify all of your fractions if you can. And this guy was negative, so it's negative one. And the reason why this guy's negative one, to just to do a quick fraction thing, is if I ignore this negative, we're just ignoring it for a moment, don't panic. The fraction is saying I have two parts to make the whole, and the top is saying how many of those pieces you have. So this is saying I've got two out of two pieces. Well, my gosh, that is just the whole gosh darn thing now, isn't it? Kind of looks like a bad drawing of a brain. Huh, that's fun. <laughs> so this is going to reduce to negative one. A little space in there. There we go. Negative one. The slope of that is negative one. Great. Let's do another one. Another one. I hope you're all enjoying the other, the like random song references. It feels right for Mike, I'm not going to lie. All right, let's go. Oh, oh, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. What? Let's get the slope of this guy. I'm actually going to give you guys a moment to try and find the slope, okay? Try and use the tools we did and find the slope, okay? And then we will talk about it and check our answers together. Don't be afraid to get it wrong, okay? I'm seeing a lot of good conversation and good guesses and answers in the chat. Also, I'm loving that people are giving me an answer and still saying like, oh, I'm confused or I'm not sure, but I think it's this. Like, take a moment and pat yourself on the back for that. Take that moment and like be really proud of you. Oh my gosh, I love that someone just gave it to me in a decimal. Like, you didn't have to, but that's a way, and I love that. Because you're throwing yourself out there. You are trying it, even if you're not sure. And that's beautiful. So I love that I'm seeing decimals. I love that I'm seeing fractions. I love that I'm seeing it in words. Because there are so many different ways to describe this. Okay, someone said, if I get it wrong, how can I be proud? You can be proud because you tried. You want to know what we learn. 
the biggest thing I want you to take away, if you take away no mathematical things from this, I want you to take away that the biggest thing you can do in life is you can try. Are you always going to be successful when you try? No, you're just not. Is that okay? Yeah, because failing at something is the first step to being really good at something. You got to try a lot. You got to keep trying. And you need to be proud of yourself. You can't get any further if you beat yourself up for being wrong. Right? You get to keep trying. Like, don't be satisfied with getting it wrong. But be proud of yourself for trying it. Because you are doing so much better than everyone else who didn't try at all. If you never try, you never get anywhere. Have I failed? I've failed a lot. We learn a lot from failure, though. Successes? Not so much. So keep being proud of yourself for trying. Even when you fail. Okay? Because I'm proud of you. Yeah, math is like art. The more you try, the better you get. Oh my gosh. I'm getting caught. The one problem with sitting on the floor is I'm getting caught on my chains. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's do it, do it, do it. Right off the bat, this guy's going down, down, down. So I know it's negative. All right. How much did it go down, though? How much did it go down? I started at three, and I went down one, two, three, all the way to zero here. So I went down three. All right, how much did I go over? I'm at two, and I went over one, two. So if you said negative three halves, you are correct. Another way of saying this, if you wanted it in a decimal form, right, is you could write it as a decimal. How many times does two go into three? How many times does two go into three? Well, that sucker goes into three one time. So this, I'm going to write it down here. I know I have a one, and then if I did two to, I took two out of there, I would have one half left. So it would be negative 1.5. So if you said negative 1.5 was your slope, you are also correct. Good job. And if you didn't get either of those, but you put in your best guess and you see where you went wrong, good job. All right, we're gonna try one more, my dears, and then we're gonna get going for the day, okay? Because I gotta go eat lunch. Because I'm hungry. And you should go eat lunch too. I actually don't know what time it is where you live. I know some people live in other countries, and that's a thing. Okay, anyways, I'm ranting. <laughs> one more, and then we are going to call it an end for the day. Mm -hmm. All right, so this guy, give this guy a try. This guy is at two, two, and then at four, three, okay? Give that guy a try. Could give you a couple, give you a minute to put your best thoughts down. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, the people are giving me their time zone and their times. That's fun. Put your best thoughts down and then we'll check our answers, okay? Oh, I'm seeing fractions, I'm seeing decimals, and I love it. You are all so smart and beautiful. Look at you go. Ah, oh, and people are saying it in word form too. I love that. Yes, I love people are putting down their best guesses. That's so good. All right, let's talk about this guy. So right away, this guy's going up, right? He's going up, going up. So I know it's positive. All right. But how much is it going up? How much did my Y change from um, this? It's at two to three. Well, this guy only went up one, right? Dirt, dirt, dirt. From two to three, it went up one. Now, how much did it go over? It went over from two to four. So that's one, two. It went over two. So if you said my slope was one half, you are correct. Now, um, if you said, what is one half as a decimal? Now, I don't think like people, I think people are overthinking it when they're saying like, I don't know how to do this in decimals. It's just at the end, making it a decimal, just the same way you would make it a decimal any other time, right? Dividing the top by the bottom, numerator by denominator. Awesome, 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 my dears. It is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Oh, that looks terrible. Um, <laughs> is also another way to say my slope. And notice that's, that's, that's not a very big number, right? So it's not going up very much. When we had bigger numbers like 3 over 1, it was like, Whoa, it was way up, right? So remember... The bigger the number, the steeper your slope is, the more it's going up or down. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, my dears. I hope this was helpful. Um, if this recorded properly, right and there weren't any technical difficulties you can find this up on my youtube channel later if you missed any part of it or you just need a refresher um you can check there you can find my youtube channel um in on my like on my page in my link tree it'll be in there um and you can find past math lessons in there as well i will be posting a video um, pretty soon after this, asking you guys if you have anything you'd like to see in a math live, okay? So look for that, and please tell me what you want to see. Tell me what would be helpful for you, okay? Thank you all for taking time out of your day to learn with me, and be proud of yourself for trying something on your Saturday morning, or Saturday evening, depending on where you are. No, you guys are so sweet. All right. You guys have a great day. I'm proud of all of you, okay? Bye.